Hey, what's going on everyone? Today we are taking a look at an all-in-one video collaboration bar from our friends over at Poly. We're taking a look at the Poly X70. The X70 is currently certified for Zoom Rooms, Ring Central, and a number of other platforms. And in the coming months, it'll be certified for Microsoft Teams Rooms. So keep an eye out in the community for that news. In this video, we're gonna be unboxing this device, getting an up close and personal look at all of its features, all of its capabilities. And then we'll be setting the system up and taking a look at some of the AI capabilities built into the video bar. It's got noise block AI for that premium audio experience, ensuring all uh, distracting background noise is removed from the audio experience. And then the director AI brings in three different video modes, group framing, people framing, bringing in that meeting room equity experience, and then speaker framing. Let's dig in. All right, first off, we'll pull this little tab out. We'll lift this top portion, and then the whole side of the box opens on up. At the very top, of course, we've got our documentation. After getting our lid open, we've got these cardboard insert flaps that will just lift up. They have a little bit of space to them, so it will give air in the box, protecting the X70 from getting uh, bumped around unnecessarily. And once we get them all lifted, we can see the X70 is sitting right below, and we can just lift that on out. With the X70 out of the box, this little lip here lifts right up. And tilting the box over, you can see we've got several components in here. We've got our Ethernet cable 15 feet long right here. Got some mounting hardware right at the front. HDMI cable. Secondary HDMI cable. We do want to support dual displays after all. More mounting hardware the screws and anchors for our mounting hardware. On the opposite side, we've got power supply. Now, once we take the X70 itself out of the protective plastic that it was wrapped in, uh, a couple things I wanna call out. We've got this uh, protective film here to cover up our dual 4K cameras. Once we remove that, we can see they are both down there. The other thing I wanna call out is that the fabric covering our speakers and microphones actually has a bit of give here, okay? There's there's not uh, internal materials coming right up to the edge of the cloth. So I would advise that you're careful during unpackaging not to press in too much here, not to, to poke into that. You wouldn't wanna rip or tear that fabric. With everything unboxed, of course, we've got our X70 at the back here. You can see it is a decent size machine. This packs a lot of audio and video punch as well as an onboard AI for running your video conferencing apps. We've got the hardware uh, screws and anchors over here for the included mounting hardware. You've got the piece of the mounting hardware that will go on the back of the X70 and that will connect into this piece of hardware that mounts to the wall. We've got a couple different mounting options below or above the display. We've then got the two included HDMI cables right here. We've got our included ethernet cable. We've got the power supply and cable, our quick start guide that shows us how to do our mounting and cabling. And then this is our uh, template that is provided. It can be folded in two different directions. This side would be if you're going to uh, do a top mount for the X70. The flip side is if we're gonna do a bottom mount for the X70. We're gonna be doing a bottom mount right below our dual displays. So I've folded it in to match that. We can see these little holes pop right out, showing us where we need to make our circles so we can pre-drill our holes and uh, put our anchors in the right spot on the wall. Coming in for a closer look at how this mounting is going to work, I'm not gonna go over the actual installation of the mounts on the back of the device and on the wall, but this will sit on the wall like so. You've got these pieces right here that are protruded out from the wall, which will be back that direction, so that cables can be run back here and held in place. And then this piece, mounted at the back of the X70, will actually sit right in here. And if we line it up in the center, this piece comes into the middle, it hangs there. There's a little bit of hinge work to let you adjust the angle but it's pretty rigid because the device has a decent amount of weight to it. And this is how the device will hang up on the wall. The X70 features dual 4K cameras, 20 megapixel cameras. The bottom one has a 120 degree horizontal field of view, and that top camera 
has a 70 degree horizontal field of view. The dual camera setup features a built-in electronic privacy shutter. The Director AI technology allows for group framing, people framing, and speaker framing. The X70 features two-way stereo speakers and custom-tuned bass ports. The onboard microarray features a 25-foot pickup range with two MEMS microphones and two second-order microphones. It also features Poly's Noise Block AI. The X70 also features an air quality sensor and its AI capabilities include people counting capability as well. Looking past one of our base boost ports here on the back of the device, and on the left-hand side when looking at the device from the back, we've got two different HDMI out ports, one HDMI in port, two different USB-A ports, and a USB-C port at the very bottom. On the other side at the back of the device, again, looking past the other base boost port, we've got two audio ports right up top here, another audio connection, then we've got our network ethernet cable port right here, and then we've got our power right down here at the bottom. Last but not least, a little Kensington lock slot to make sure that this investment does not go walking away from the conference room. At the back of the device, aside from all the lovely information we get about the device here, we've got these four holes where the screws will go into to hold the, uh, the wall mount portion that attaches to the back of the X70. You can see it is inset right here. That's where that entire attachment will sit with the screws holding it in at these four points. With the device overview completed, let's get this thing mounted and check out the AI capabilities in action. Before we get it mounted and check out the AI features, let's go ahead and get some cabling done. We've got our power cable that goes in the bottom right there. And we've got our ethernet cable that is gonna go right here. And that'll do it for this side because we're not working with the touchscreen and we don't need this audio connection or either of these three and a half millimeter connections. But you will notice that we've got our mounting piece that goes on the back of the X70 already attached. We do have the other half of this mounted to our wall. So now we'll be able to slide this in place when we're ready to mount. We've got our first HDMI cable for our first monitor and our second HDMI cable for the second monitor. And we are going to be optionally setting this up as a device mode or BYOD setup. We want to be able to walk in with our laptop and connect to the X70 so that we can run our own, let's say, Microsoft Teams meeting and use this as our camera, use the built-in AI for it, speakers, microphones, etc. So we'll put the HDMI in right there and we'll plug in our USB-C right here at the bottom and the other side of that is going to be this USB-A connection for our laptop. Taking a look at our bracket on the wall, the bracket we just saw on the back of the X70 is gonna slide in right here. We've got these two bars off to the side that kind of stand out from the wall a bit. As you can see with these cables right here, they are just coming down and being held off to the side. So on either side of the X70, we will wrap cables down through there, and then we can bring them all into the center and hide them uh, this way, or if you're mounting in a room, you'll be able to have those cables be uh, put into the wall if you need to. Now to attach the X70, it will simply have that groove line up in the back. Once it's there, it doesn't slide back and forth. We can make sure we've got kind of the right angle there, and then we can tilt it to have the desired uh, direction we want it to have from a uh, view vantage. We don't want it to be pointing down too much unless it's mounted higher above the displays. And if it's mounted below the displays, we want to tilt it up a little bit. And we've got our X70 mounted to the wall. A little bit of cable tidying up to be done still. TC8 right below it. As you can see, the TC8 is powering on. We've plugged it into a PoE port. And the X70 is going through its power on sequence. We can see the electronic privacy shutters have activated on both cameras and they'll disappear in a second. We'll get a little white light up top indicating that the device is powered on. All right, so before we dig into our demos and exploring the system, we'll establish kind of how we got to where we're at right now. We've got the X70 wall mounted, looks nice and tidy up on the wall, did the best I could with the cables, but 
in a professionally set up conference room, obviously that's going to look even better. You've got the TC8 down here, the center of room touch controller. Uh, they are prepared, so we didn't need to do any pairing. I can now control my experiences right here with the touch screen and see them on this dual display. Obviously, we have dual display set up on the camera. Uh, we reset this to its factory defaults just to get a fresh start and then went and updated the system off camera. And I'll show you in the web interface how to do that. So this is a fully up-to-date system, ready to go, ready to demo. So this default experience is the poly mode that we're in. This is the poly mode, the poly experience. You can choose from Zoom Rooms and Ring Central and a few others so that you get that platform as the experience here. But this is the poly experience. And we also have the extra HDMI and USB cable here so that we can go with device mode, as you see right up here. And device mode will let us plug our laptop in, take over the peripherals in the room, and bypassing the OS so that we can effectively use the camera, mic, speaker, display uh, on our laptop for our own purposes. Maybe we've got a meeting that we want to run on our, on our laptop that isn't yet supported, like Microsoft Teams, that will be supported eventually. So keep an eye out for that. But that's our default experience here. Coming on into this menu, you can see we've got place to call, content, camera controls, device mode. If I click on this little uh, tab at the bottom, we can mute ourselves. We can uh, adjust our volume up and down. We can turn our camera off. You can see that disappear. We can turn the camera on. We're back to our camera view there. And if we come over to settings, you'll see that we've got all of our room information. You're going to need to come in here to get the IP address of your device, of the uh, X70 itself, so that you can open a browser on your laptop, navigate to that IP, assuming you're on the same network, and then you can manage even more settings from that web interface that aren't surfaced on the device itself. Uh, and then you've got the controller information here as well. Coming down to user settings, then we can adjust our brightness if we need to. I'll go ahead and turn that brightness up a little bit there. We'll turn it up even more. And then if we need to unpair, it tells us how to unpair. But we don't need to unpair, so we're not going to do that. All right, so back over on our laptop, I mentioned that in order to manage the settings of the X70, there's only a little bit exposed on the device itself. You actually need to go into the web interface uh, to change up some of the settings that you might want to control some of those AI features to change the platform. There's actually a lot you can do in here. So I'm going to try to gloss over this to give you what you need without going as deep as you can in some of these areas. You have a prompt right up top that says you're using that default password and Polly strongly recommends that you change it. Uh, I did not for this demo, but in production, you may want to adhere to that advice. So we'll go ahead and close that. Right up here on our dashboard, we get a system status. Uh, we can see what's in use, what's in not, what's good to go. We get details about the system, our network settings, uh, usage of the device. And then a little dialer down here as well, our contacts, favorites, recent. If I go down to place a call right below dashboard on the left-hand side, we've got the dial section. You can make this an audio call only or video call uh, under general settings. So we go to information, contact stuff you can load up, location pieces you can put in here. Provider, this is where you'll actually change it to be the platform that you want it to be. Now, right now we're on Poly, that's our default. You can change this to Zoom Rooms. You can change this to Go to Room, Blue Jeans, Ring Central. We've got Device Mode here, Starleaf, Dial Pad Conference Room, and then Tencent Meeting Room. So a lot of different meeting room platforms supported. And in the future, not yet, but in the future, Microsoft Teams Rooms should be added to that list as a certified uh, provider. So uh, not there yet. But uh, for those of you that are Microsoft Teams enthusiasts in my network, it's coming, but this is where you would change that. Coming down to the home screen, you can see that we've got several things in here we can do to customize that. You've got this uh, home screen elements. We've got the calendar, uh, address bar, poly control information, lots of things can be done here. Background can be changed. I'm not gonna mess with any of it, but you should be getting an idea of the uh, extensibility of managing the system and customizing it. Select your language, date and time setup, device management. So where are we gonna get our updates from? This is where I came to do my updates earlier. 
I pulled it from the Poly support site, though you can use a custom server URL here. Um, you uncheck or uncheck, only check for updates during all maintenance hours. Do you want them to be automatic? Um, what are the maintenance hours? And then if there are any new updates found and we can see the software version is up to date and our TC8 is up to date, uh, then we would update all if they needed to be, but we're up to date, so all good. And then we can unpair the device from here as well, but again, not doing that. System settings, we can change the device name, change the room name, uh, sleep settings, do we want, to, uh, what do we want it to do when it goes to sleep? Black or no signal, uh, how much time should go by before it goes to sleep, do we enable the mic mute in sleep mode? Uh, digital signage, now this is pretty cool. If you let the device, if you enable this and then set a start after, and I put after five minutes here, you can choose an, a, pro a provider. You've got app space, radiant, or custom. And for playing purposes, I have said custom. We chose the signage URL to be commsvnx.com, a conference that happens to be near and dear to my heart that is happening next week at the time of making this video. Uh, and we'll take a look at what that looks like on the screen. You can actually see it in the background right now behind me. I have been away from doing anything with the room for five minutes. And so the comms V next website is cycling behind me. Uh, we can choose an out of office hours if we need to, system LED brightness, uh, collaboration tools. Do we want to enable device mode? Yes, I do, because we're going to demo that, uh, the timeout for that, and then enable poly content app sharing. And then if you're going to have a remote control for the room, this is where you would discover that and set that up. On our network side, you've got LAN information, your IP addresses, LAN options, network quality, firewall capabilities, and then web proxy settings if you need those. You have Wi-Fi capabilities as well. Uh, and then there are DNS settings in here in case you're not doing uh, dynamic uh, DNS. Call configuration, you've got your call settings, you've got dialing preference, recent calls, H233, H3, H3, and then SIP settings as well. Audio and video. Now, this is where those of us uh, that are a little used to, more used to managing MTRs will want to pay attention to here. Uh, on the monitor section, you've got two monitors showing up because I've got two monitors plugged in. Dual display settings. So since we've got dual displays, what do we want them to look like? Do we want uh, the self view to be a full screen or do we want to relegate that to a corner of the screen? I like the full screen if we don't have other people on the call. For content display, do we want it to be only displaying content on one screen with the images on the other or do we want images and content both to be on one and then content to be big on the other? I feel like that's a waste of space in my opinion, so I'm going to keep the single check there. And then CEC, if your displays allow for it, you can enable that right here as well. Audio. So microphones are currently muted, but you've got a lot of different settings in here. Uh, of note, some of those AI settings, you've got enable M mode, you've got audio mute auto answered calls, um, enable noise block AI, I like that, checked it. Enable join and leave tones, yes. Um, enable audio mute reminder, acoustic fence, Acoust acoustic fence is awesome. So I check that and turn the sensitivity to five, but you can adjust that as needed. Enable USB audio, enable auto mic switching. On our video inputs, there are several things that you can do in here. One I want to call out is the enable camera update. I, I checked that. As you can see, camera sleep mode, you can have that be save energy or fast wake up. Uh, current people camera is the E70. Uh, down on the E70 itself. Now I did notice in here that my tracking mode field did not show up when my digital signage was in motion. I had to go and wake the device up, the camera woke up, and then tracking mode showed up for me to, uh, for me to uh, change the setting here. So right now we've got people framing selected. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on frame group uh, because that way it will, um, demonstrate me walking around the room and doing just, you know, the group framing. And then we'll go and demonstrate the people framing after that. And I may be able to de demonstrate speaker frame as well, but these are the three different AI modes, or we can just turn off the AI tracking altogether. Uh, but we'll do frame group. We can optimize this for sharpness or motion. Same with our HDMI input, uh, sharpness or motion. Uh, enable HDMI auto start, yes. 
and then um, we can choose whether we're displaying as content or people for our HDMI input. So we changed frame group. I'm going to say save and it tells me my changes were submitted successfully. We come down to security. So much in here. I can't touch on all of it. Access control, certificates, local accounts, global security settings, uh, Active Directory components in here, password requirements, uh, security code if we want to enable that, a security banner. Now, if I check this, we've got a custom banner, or if you're a DOD customer, we've got pre-populated DOD text that needs to be in there. So I'm going to turn this back off because I don't need a security banner, but it's nice that it's there. Uh, content, allow users to save content from the primary network, allow users to save content from Wi-Fi network. I haven't changed anything. That's what the defaults were, but they're there. And then wireless security. Do we want wireless security? Do we want Bluetooth? Uh, do we, are we going to enable Miracast and AirPlay, uh, operating channel, and then Miracast over infrastructure, yes or no? On the server side, we've got our calendaring service. We've got our directory servers, provisioning server, SNMP, and cloud. Now for diagnostics, we've got remote monitoring. We obviously get a remote view of the room here. Uh, control presets, video capture. This you know allows you to record a clip and send it in to Poly for troubleshooting purposes. Call call statistics system is not currently in a call, so it doesn't apply right now. System status, we get all of our statuses for all these different components and capabilities. And then logs right down here. We, do we turn on logs? Do we turn them off? If we if you download them, here's where we can do that. We can reset the system completely or just restart it. Uh, we can take a look at the sessions that are in play right now. We've got two admin sessions open. And then audio tests. We can do our audio tests from here as well. Okay, now that we're done with our tour of the settings that you can manage this device with in the web address for the device, there's a ton there. Um, I actually flipped the machine into device mode instead of leaving it in poly mode uh, because we're not going to be demoing any room systems, any uh, Zoom rooms or Ring Central, and Microsoft Teams room, which is what I would typically demo, is not yet certified. The device is not yet certified for it. That's in the future. So the next best thing, we put this in USB or device mode. I have a Microsoft Teams meeting fired up and ready to go on my laptop. And we're going to plug in, as the screen says, our USB for camera, microphone, and speakers, and HDMI for the displays up here. So first things first, you'll see we've just got the camera from the laptop going here. I've got it facing me. And now I'm going to plug in the USB. And once we plug the USB in, it flips over. And there we go. We've got the X70 looking at the back of the laptop now. And we've also got, if you look up here, the X70 for our audio. So we are now have audio and video coming through as well as the speakers coming through to the device that we can use in our Microsoft Teams meeting. Now we'll plug the HDMI in and that will let me take over both of these displays. So now the laptop can just be sitting here because everything I'm doing on the laptop is on display here on the actual room system using our X70, the X70 being our camera in the room. So we will say join now. Okay, so first demo, we're gonna demo the group framing. And the idea here is the camera is going to keep an eye on the group as it grows or shrinks uh, and maybe moves around the room a bit. So here I am, imagine me being the head coach of a major sports team. And I need to call in one of my uh, football players to come into the meeting that we're going to have with the team owner. So the football player comes into the room and stands over here, and we wait to have a meeting with the other, with the owner of the team. And so say say hi there. Bye. There you go. So as I move over here, it will recalibrate to find me, and then as my player in the room gets a little impatient and starts pacing and maybe walks over to the other side of the room over there by the door awesome the camera will again recalibrate figure out where he's at and then bring us all in and then if the football player gets angry at the owner and storms out of the room completely go ahead get angry and storm out of the room 
then the camera will recognize that we don't need to pay attention to him. It didn't need to slam the door so hard, but it will just focus in on only me at that point. There it is. There's the transition. That's group framing, paying attention to who's in the room, who's not, and framing into where we don't have wasted space on the camera throughout the rest of the room. Okay, so now we are demonstrating speaker framing. We have multiple people in the room. My player is now cooled off. He's come back in after storming out of the room. He's ready to give the owner, the far end participant, a piece of his mind. So he's gonna make some demands and the camera will stop focusing on me as the active speaker and we'll start focusing on you. Listen here, owner. If you don't give me that five-year, ten million dollar contract, I'm gonna leave and play for the San Francisco Three Niners. Well, there you have it. If he doesn't get his ten million dollar contract, he's gonna leave and play for the San Francisco 49ers. We've got big aspirations ahead of us, I guess. But there you go. Speaker framing. It pays attention to who is actively speaking and ignores the other people in the room. Okay, and now we are demoing the people framing, which is in preview uh, for the X70. But uh, as you can see, we are both in the room, but it is giving us each our own little square. And as I step over here, it's going to recalibrate my own little square and frame me back in. Maybe as my player steps toward the middle of the room, go ahead, player, come toward the middle of the room a little bit and then stop. It will recalibrate, understand where he's at, and give him his own square. And it even does it with the camera rig standing in front of him. So there you go, that's the people framing. It does show that it's in beta on the system. Obviously that'll make production before too long. And then we will expect to see these features once this device is certified for Microsoft Teams. In Microsoft Teams, keep in mind, this is not actually running Teams rooms, we are in our device mode so we have our laptop taking over the camera and the ai of the camera to show these features in a microsoft teams meeting okay so we learned a couple things there first of which is that it's very difficult to speak with a football mouth guard in your mouth nonetheless the speaker framing detected the speaker and it changed things up people framing gave each person in the room their own little square that feature will be out of beta at some point, but currently you can access it in beta. And again, I wanna reiterate, I normally do videos on team certified devices, though I do some that are not team certified as well. The X70 is not yet certified for Microsoft Teams rooms. That is on the roadmap, so keep an eye on that perhaps later in this year. For now, that is the X70 with the TC8, the entire solution set up, mounted. We put it into the device mode so that we could use our laptop with the gear so we could run Microsoft Teams on our own laptop and demo these capabilities on the dual displays. That's what you've been seeing. I hope you found this helpful. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the like button on the video if you liked it, turn on notifications so that you don't mix the next helpful video. And if you did find it helpful, share it all over your LinkedIn, your Twitter, wherever you happen to hang out socially online much appreciated. Thanks for watching and I hope we'll see you back here for the next device overview video.